From KGW, this is The Good Stuff. It is a hobby that adds to my waterfowl addiction, whether it be hunting or at a refuge taking photos of these birds. Today on The Good Stuff, one man's eye for the wild turned into a pa passion. Thanks so much for joining us. I'm Brittany Falkers. This week, Grant McComey takes us on a wildlife adventure into the Willamette Valley. That's where thousands of migrating Canadian geese make their winter home. And for one photographer, it's the perfect place to capture them taking flight. Check it out. If your daily commute feels hectic, consider theirs. 20,000 Canada geese jammed wing to wing, twisting and turning, rising in flight. You got wetlands, you got oaks, and you have geese. <laughs> the big birds soar, land, and munch the grass across the lush pastures at Basket Slough Wildlife Refuge just 10 miles west of Salem. Right now, they're gorging themselves to get enough nutrition to head back up to Alaska and breed. Photographer Kelly Warren likes to be where the flocks are, and he says this is just one of four easy-to-reach federal Willamette Valley refuges that protect habitat. They winter in the Willamette Valley because there's food sources and everything that they need to succeed. Warren's eye for the wild, plus his camera skills, allow him to feed his addiction shooting wildlife with a long distance lens. Especially the seven subspecies of Canada geese that migrate to Oregon. So if you don't know a cackler from a taverner from an Aleutian, not a problem. Warren's new book will set you straight. An ID field guide documenting the Oregon goose story with history, biology, and especially photos. It's an ongoing process and I don't think I'll ever be happy with the overall result. It is a hobby that adds to my waterfowl addiction, whether it be hunting or at a refuge taking photos of these birds. Warren's dad and granddad drew Kelly to the outdoors. Grandfather Charles Warren was a noted fish and wildlife prof at OSU, and he saw something special in the youngster. He bought Kelly his first camera. He's like, you're always in the marsh, you're always hunting, you're always doing things, so go buy a camera. And he did, and then they traveled to wildlife meccas like Klamath and Malheur. We would take uh, spring bird trips to Malheur and other areas and, and learn the different species, look at the migration routes and, and all the corridors and learn everything that I could about birds. So that started this hobby and this passion for photography. I'll say Warren has collected over 150 goose photos in his book, but he averaged 500 photos for each one selected. I have lots of extended hard drives. <laughs> this wildlife biologist who works for Ducks Unlimited is often joined by his wife and youngster in the field. Oh, eagle. That's going to be good. And he says photo clarity is critical composition and contrast too. I try to capture a lot of geese in flight. Uh, stationary definitely kind of gets boring. And when it comes to the average Joe or Josephine who want perfect wildlife photos. Stay in your car. The geese are used to cars driving back and forth. If you get out like us, they're gonna maintain a distance and not move closer. Solid advice from a trailblazing pro who will set you on the right path for wildlife moments like this. With photographer Jeff Kastner, Grant McComey, KGW. He really does have such a spectacular eye for those birds, doesn't he? And hey, be sure to watch our half hour program of Grant's Getaways. The show airs next this Friday at 7 p.m. And from the wetlands to wet weather. Well, the Cascades are getting some serious snow. We're in a string of soggy days here in the valley, but these gray days aren't all bad, are they? So I asked you to share your favorite rainy day activity on social media. Me, I love a good nap on a rainy day, but when I'm not snoozing, I love to pass the time by just playing a little guitar. It's relaxing no matter what the weather is outside, but there is just something special about the rain that ignites 
ignites that creative spark. And I know I'm not alone because the rainy weather puts John in the artsy mood too, inspiring him to get out his camera. He likes to take puddle reflection photos, sharing this really great shot with us. It's just beautiful. Nancy makes good use out of a rainy day too. She finished this painting for the upcoming Blacklight show at Gifty Kitty. This one titled Astro Cats, love that by the way, glows in the dark. I absolutely love it, it's so cool. Gifty Kitty, by the way, if you haven't heard of them, is a shop on Mississippi Avenue in Portland featuring everything feline created by mostly local artists. Seems so cool. And you know, speaking of cats, Veronica likes to cuddle up with her kitty on a rainy day, but that's not all. She also says rain pairs best with homemade chili and cornbread while reading a good book. Yeah, that sounds pretty perfect to me, Veronica. And I gotta say, our pets really do make the perfect rainy day companions, don't they? While C is busy on the computer, she got the, she's got the perfect snuggle buddy to keep her company. Just look at that face, that long, perfect nose. I just wanna boop it. Good boy or girl. And hey, you can share photos of good stuff happening in your community. Maybe share your rainy day activity with us by texting that number on your screen, 503-226-5088. You can also email me at thegoodstuffatkgw.com. And all right, check this out. The Grotto, a historic landmark in Northeast Portland, is celebrating its centennial anniversary this year. To kick off the celebration, the Grotto is partnering with the American Red Cross to host a three-day blood drive. Tomorrow is the final day. It's happening inside their conference center on Northeast Skidmore Street. We feel a need to serve the community beyond the spiritual needs of the community. We want to contribute to the physical needs of the community as well. To register to donate blood, visit thegrotto.org for details. The Grotto also plans to hold more events throughout the year to celebrate this huge milestone. Take me for a drive. Take me for a drive. Oh yeah, I can listen to that all Day. That's so fun to jam to. That was TJ Wong on guitar and Alec Dong on drums. They're musicians based out of Portland. We invited them to perform for us on this morning's Sunrise Show. If you didn't know, January is Portland Music Month. So of course, we wanted some local talent in studio to highlight them. And get this, TJ and Alec will actually be representing the Pacific Northwest at next week's International Blues Challenge in Tennessee. It's actually TJ's fourth time representing the region at this annual competition. And to hype them up for the big day, they'll there will be a send-off party and fundraiser. It's happening this Sunday from 1 to 5 p.m. It'll be at the Blue Diamond in Northeast Portland on 20th and Sandy. It's going to be a fun party. Some good music, I can only imagine. Well, up next here on The Good Stuff, meet the woman who's rising to the top in this year's Cake Boss competition.
Welcome back, everyone. French. Pr oh, OK. <laughs> des Jeux Olympiques et Paralympiques les plus décarbonés de l'histoire, des Jeux Verts qui respectent les accords de Paris. French President Emmanuel Macron officially announced the 200-day countdown for the Paris 2024 Olympics. He's urging the French public to get more involved in sports as the country prepares to host the Summer Games for the first time in 100 years. The Olympics are July 26th through August 11th. You'll be able to watch the action right here on KGW. The Paralympics will be staged from August 28th until September 8th. I oh, can't wait for that. And hey, speaking of a little competition, one woman in Idaho is taking the cake in this year's nationwide Cake Boss competition. She's currently in sixth place in the quarterfinals. Shira Matsuwana caught up with the baker to find out about her journey. From licking the spatula to watching her mom and grandma in the kitchen, Alicia English's love for baking started at a young age. We baked a lot, you know, homemade everything. That experience, mixed with her passion, created the perfect recipe for Alicia to become a home baker. And now, a finalist in Buddy Velastro's The Greatest Baker Competition. There's a lot of cake here, man. Buddy is also known as the cake boss from the popular reality show. That's how you make a pumpkin cake. It's a fundraiser for the Be Positive Foundation, and anything, any boats that are purchased go towards that. And the winner will get $10,000. You get flown to meet Buddy, and you also get featured in Bake From Scratch magazine. Over the years, Alicia has made cakes for birthdays, baby showers, and weddings. From Fortnite-themed cakes to Harry Potter. I did the sorting hat, like a whole cake. Everything on it was edible. I just do it from home. I've never had like a storefront or a bakery. But she's hoping that'll change if she wins. She says she'll use the money to open her own bakery. But winning the money would just be the icing on the cake. For Alicia, it's all about the chance to meet the cake boss himself. He's been like my idol for, for baking forever, a, apart from my mother and my grandmother. Big time, baby! He's like the main one who I've kind of focused on and taken things away from, like his skill and the things he does and the way he does it. So for, for me, it would just be, I'd be over the moon to meet him and be like, hey, you're the reason I'm a baker. Wow, how cool is that? By the way, voting is still open. You can head to greatestbaker.com to submit your vote. Well, hey, it's that time of year when snow is falling, not only in Oregon, but across the country. And check this out. The Bartz brothers are taking full advantage of wintry weather in Minnesota. In fact, since 2012, they've built nine giant snow sea creatures. They didn't take a break during the pandemic, but as Heidi Wigdahl shows us, the brothers are ready to get the show back on the road this year. When it's January in New Brighton, the Bartz brothers are bound to be outside. It's been a fun journey. We never thought we were gonna get into this. It's not something we like aspired to be snow artists. A snow day in 2012 snowballed into an annual snow sculpting tradition for brothers Austin, Connor, and Trevor. Each sculpture inspired by a sea creature and displayed in their parents' front yard. We knew it didn't really work at our parents' house anymore. It was just getting too busy. After a break during the pandemic, they're back. Yeah, yesterday I started at eight and I was here till 11.50 at night. Packing in long hours at Brightwood Hills Golf Course. For that side of the wall, how long did it 50? take? 50? What? 50 minutes? 57. Woo! Wow. A new location and new face. This is my brother Connor, and then the replacement brother Luke. It's been cool to see the process of the sculpture so far and how hard working they are. Even without snow. We just kept watching the forecast and we're like, okay, this isn't gonna happen. But outside help is here. As long as temps stay down, the snow machine stays on. They use these bins to form all the snow blocks. Ideally, they'll sit out here for two days before being used on the archway. So we're going to build two pillars up. Soon they'll start on this year's sea creature. Donations raised will help provide clean water to a country in need. And a lot of people in different countries, they don't have any clean water at all. So that really is what drives us. Drives them to dig in each January. Wow, so much work, but I know the community there has got to enjoy it. So cool.
Hey, more to come. The work of a local program, which one woman says saved her life. Hey, welcome back everyone. If you're not familiar with Meals on Wheels, it's a program consistently doing good work delivering meals to people at home who might not be able to purchase or prepare their own. We talked to an Oregon woman who says the program saved her life. Gail Hayden faced health issues during the pandemic, which led to back to back surgeries. Without help or support nearby, she signed up for the Meals on Wheels People program. And the impact, she says, has been life changing. Well, I don't want to be dramatic, but it saves my life. Uh, I live alone, family's far, and uh, I didn't expect to have all these surgeries and everything that happened. Gail also told us that it's not just the food that's been a lifeline. It's also about not feeling alone anymore with the support and friendship that she's made through Meals on Wheels People. It's a great organization, really worth volunteering if you have the time. Well, a school in the Park Rose District is taking a unique approach to boost student attendance numbers. They're adding a washer and dryer for their families to use. The appliances were delivered to Prescott Elementary School just before winter break. They came from a partnership between Whirlpool and Teach for America. Studies have shown that when children uh, don't feel good about how they look, when they don't have clean clothes or don't have access, um, to fresh garments that they oftentimes see an increase of absenteeism. We see an increase of students who stay home um, and miss school. And what we know about school is that attendance matters and instruction counts and you've got to be in your seat. This is such a great idea. The appliances came with a year's supply of detergent and $10,000 that Prescott is using to retrofit a room in the building with the proper washer and dryer hookups. They hope to have the machines up and running soon for families to start using. Still to come here on The Good Stuff, stolen toys that are now replenished. How the good work of one community helped keep the smile on children's faces during a tough time.
everybody. Welcome back to the good stuff. All right, listen to this final story of the night. A Florida community comes together to replenish thousands of dollars in stolen Legos that were meant for children with cancer. That theft happened, happened just before the new year. Atia Collins spoke with the cancer survivors who wanted to give back. I hope they're happy. I hope, I hope this gives them joy and brings them happiness and the tough time they're going through. Diagnosed as a baby with a rare form of brain cancer, Ben Hoffman spent the first four years of his life battling the disease. It was during his treatment he found his love for Legos. It takes your mind off what you're going through and it obviously he gives a distraction from you know everything and makes you happy in your hard time. These sets from his personal collection are just some of the hundreds of pounds of Legos donated to the V for Victory nonprofit. The colorful bricks will become free gifts for children battling cancer. We have a lot of warriors who will come here straight from treatment and to see the look on children's faces as they're able to shop in a store by themselves. They don't have to worry about being around other people if they're in a vulnerable state and they really get to just have those moments of normalcy um, for a few minutes and it's really nice to see that for the families. The call for donations came after $45,000 worth of Legos were stolen from the nonprofit's warehouse just before the new year. I wanted to help. I felt really bad. And uh, my husband had cancer, and I know how hard it is on, on families and people that do have cancer. Especially children. Children, yes. The Legos you see behind me are more than just a toy. It's a distraction for a child going through cancer treatment and a way for their family to connect during a difficult time. Just, it just touched my heart. I just felt that something like this that happens, I think it's great that people, community come together and do something to give back as well. And I just felt it was very important to do so and for the children. How cool is it to see the community rally like that? And Legos, that's like perfect for the kiddos. All right, that's all the time that we have, but we do want to leave you with a few more of your rainy day photos. Thanks for telling us what you love to do on a rainy day. And I love that for so many of you, that means cuddling up with your pets. I'm right there with you. Thanks so much for taking a little time for the good stuff.